uh, my course was delayed by almost three months. Application process was not that tough because I didn't quite do the application process. I had to get uh, two LORs. It took me almost a month to type out the SOP. I would recommend people to you know give their ILTS. Every uni UK university they do uh, offer a uh, scholarship, other scholarships, the uh, fully funded scholarships. I really don't know if any career fair took place at a university. I would say do a lot of research, like a lot, don't mess up. Don't get scared to come here because it is quite fun. Hello everyone, welcome to College Sunya Study Abroad. My name is Anshika and today we have with us Anusha who has completed her Master's in Physical Therapy from the Sheffield Hallam University. Hi Anusha. Hi. Hi welcome to the channel. Thank you so much. Uh, so, can you begin by introducing yourself a little bit, some of your background? Yeah, uh, my name is Anusha Hariharan and I come from India, um, especially Bangalore which is south part of India and I have completed my undergrad in uh, physiotherapy in Ramya Medical College, Bangalore and I decided to pursue my masters in the same field uh, in the UK because the scope here is um, much better than what's there in India. So I have now completed my masters in physiotherapy and I am a licensed physiotherapist and I have will be starting my new job soon in the same field. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, so uh, you said you did your bachelor's from India and did you have some work experience back in India or you just came as a fresher? Um, so after my uh, undergrad degree I had like so it's part of the course is a four and a half year bachelor course okay. and the half year of the six months was internship in the hospital so that gave me a lot uh, quite a lot of experience in that field and in different departments and uh, right before I started right before I came to UK I had like three months of like just leeway time to not do anything because um, of COVID the course got postponed and I had nothing else to do so I thought I'll just take up like a part-time physio role in Bangalore and okay. I had like few connections and I asked them I did my interview and I was a physiotherapist working in a hospital in the non-COVID side of the hospital and I was also doing home visits so I would say I have like three months of uh, actual work experience. Got it. Yeah. So uh, to start with the application process at the university how did you shortlist the universities and how did you choose this course i mean do in uk is it the same masters in physical therapy is offered by all the universities or it's different in different universities it's 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 quite different it might it may look the same but it also depends on uh, what exactly you want to do and which uh, elective you really want to do. So when you come with, come to physical therapy or physiotherapy, uh, you choose based on elective, whether you want to go into uh, neurophysiotherapy, which deals with neurodisabilities, or you want to go to sports physiotherapy or orthophysiotherapy, cardiorespiratory. So each of these need to be as your essential criteria because universities do offer an elective module based on what university it is. So my my main module that I wanted to do was neurophysiotherapy. Okay. So probably shortlisted maybe just four universities that had the particular module okay. and um, out of which the more uh, the leading university which I actually got into was completely research based and I wanted some practical exposure so I had to uh, you know sideline that and go with the one that I really wanted to go and like you know do the practical exposure thing so I would say the application process was quite uh, choosing the university was not that hard I used I Ha, I went to a consult, uh, you know, educational consult agency in Bangalore. It's called IDP. Not okay. Really sure Suppose yeah. the name, uh, and um, they helped me out with uh, all the application, filling of the form, and um, all my documents. But it was my job to uh, actually figure out what universities uh, had to choose. So I had gone to workshops, and uh, like you know, these international workshops that came came to India and I also used internet, Google and saw what actually the universities are here and I just shortlisted using that 
and then the criteria was all met i just needed to have a an, like an eligibility of for you know studying that particular subject um in that field so i was met and of course ielts needed to be done okay uh, other than that the applica- application process was not that tough because i didn't quite do the application process mm-hmm. uh, my my counselor did it for me and i was there although i was there with her she knew what she was doing and i didn't want to mess up anything so i let the experience take part yeah charge <laughs> got it yeah. so uh, what were the four universities that you applied to so i applied to cardiff university sheffield hallam university of salford and i think glasgow university university of glasgow i'm not really sure i forgot the name of it yeah. and um i was really inclined towards sheffield hallam and cardiff and i'd gotten actually got into all all four um but i was more inclined towards cardiff and sheffield hallam and um um i i, I accepted the offer at cardiff and it paid the application fee and all that the i don't know what it's called the conditional offer thing uh, the fee so i paid everything and then uh, i didn't do i, I feel like um, i made a minor mistake in actually researching more about the elective modules and i realized that the more elective mo- although they had the elective module i wanted it was more research based which i did not want so i had to go back into sheffield hallam which had offered me a, a there a, a seat over there as well and uh, luckily it was on time and uh, i'm like okay fine let me just research on this and then i saw it had a practical module so i had to switch universities okay so did you apply yeah. for a visa or it was before no, it was every, everything was done before like um i just you know the process of where you get the offer letter and you accept the un- uh, the conditional offer letter it was during that period of time it was not during the unconditional so that was i was quite lucky that would be yeah that's great yeah. so uh, how was i mean there would be the same process of sops and lors right yes yes yeah yeah so i had to get uh, two lors uh, from your workplace or your uh, academ you know your university where you studied from uh, so i chose my university since i did not work at that moment so i given i asked my tutors to uh, give me an lor Yeah. and uh, sop um my counselor had given me like sample sops from her previous students and i i just just brushed through them just to see what exactly how the format was how was the flow and um, i just sat down it took me quite a while i'm a procrastinator so it took me almost a month to type out the sop and then proofread it and edit it out but eventually i came through <laughs> yeah i think sop takes time and and when you're stuck on one thing you cannot think oh yeah better. yeah it's it's a, it's it's really bad when you're just like it's like a like a book block or like yeah. a author's block <laughs> for what's called and then you're stuck and you don't understand what to write next that's the point yeah. we yeah. Most, most of us have been there <laughs> yeah yeah so you said that you gave the ielts that was the only yeah. exam you gave yeah so it was it was a very weird thing so i was supposed to give the ielts uh but because i had uh, around 80 80 to 85% in my 12th um in english uh, sheffield hallam had given me like a leave saying that you know what you can come in without your ielts so mm-hmm. i didn't actually uh, write my ielts but eventually when i once i did come here and i was like half through my course and i had to give my hcpc which is basically the licensing in order for you to a physiotherapist to practice in the uk okay. i needed my ielts so i had given my ielts in the uk itself okay got it so it was yeah. it was not required for the admission process but then when you went there it became yeah. kind of a- yeah i mean there are uh, some exceptions uh it's not with all universities yeah. um and i'm not really sure how the application process is now but i was just lucky that i didn't have to give my ielts yeah. i think yeah. a lot of students in uk have told and in the videos that we've had before people have told that ielts is not required as such if you've completed your bachelor's or your 12th in english so yeah 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 but yeah. they still require uh, i mean 
um, most of my friends who came who have come here to study, they had given their IELTS and they studied in the same university in the same course. So okay. it may be a different process right now, but it's easy if you are thinking of doing a course that requires IELTS, or you're thinking of working in the UK that requires IELTS. Let's say a healthcare. If you're an international uh, student and you're in the healthcare sector. I would recommend people to, you know, give their IELTS beforehand. So at least it there, it, the validity is there, and then once they start earning, they can do it again in the UK. Got it. And I, I don't think it's a difficult paper to give. No, it's straightforward. It's a language exam. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was pretty freaked out, but uh, I was like, okay, this is, you know, what I've studied like for like twenty four years. Why am I like, you know, getting scared? So yeah, yeah. Uh, so, how is the course structured? Uh, I mean, how long is it, and how many courses do you have to complete each semester? Uh, my course, usually, most of the masters courses here are for one year, as of now. Uh, but uh, there are some courses in my university, such as Sheffield Hallam, which are fifteen months or eighteen months, and then you have the integrated masters course, which is like a new post registration course, which is for two years. So every university has a different uh, definition for what post registration is. So it's very confusing to explain. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my course was eighteen months long, and I had three semesters. Okay. And since uh, my course was delayed by almost three months, I they had skipped semester one okay. and started directly with semester three two. So it went in the flow of three two one. Okay. So uh, I had. In my semester, the first half of my study, let's say the first half of my sem, the first third half of my semester, I had three three modules or two modules, either one. Yeah, I think it was two modules. It was. Uh, do you want me to tell you the modules, or is it fine? Yeah, fine. <laughs> fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then my second half of the this one uh, had um, my elective module, which I was interested in. Uh, two of the elective modules, and then comes the dissertation process. Okay. So dissertation took almost uh, from started around Feb end and went on till July. It was okay. almost four to five months. Yeah. Got it. So uh, you started in January and you ended in July twenty second. Yes. And, yeah. Uh, after July, then you have some time to. Like work on your own and then look for full time jobs or yeah yeah um, so the thing was it it is I would advise people to if you're in, if you're going to the same field to apply for your HCPC registration uh, but I had some delays with my application and I wanted to focus on my dissertation so I did all my application of my HCPC after my dissertation submission. So from July to September, that was when I had to wait for my registration to come, and I wasn't actually looking for jobs in the same field because you can't really work uh, yeah. as a physiotherapist without the license. So mm-hmm. I was doing uh, part-time jobs um, at, like you know, the city trust. The we have a Sheffield City Trust, so it's like a sporting thing. Like you have ice shift, uh, like ice hockey, and then swimming and all that stuff. So I was just working around there. uh but uh there are people who have applied before or during their course and they have got it right at the right time and then right after the course is over they have started working as a full time physio so mm-hmm. there are two different options i chose the late la- the first one because i wanted to focus more on my studies and yeah yeah uh, so uh, during the course how is the fee structured do you, uh i mean how much did you pay for the whole course of it for, uh, and did you get any scholarships or are there any options to get scholarships um yeah so um i think with every uni- uk university they do uh, offer a scholarship or dis or a discount my a scholarship um so with sheffield hallam my course during the time when i applied it was 15000 for 50 pounds uh, for the entire course Okay. And uh, I had been offered three thousand pounds of uh, scholarship because I had obtained above sixty percent in my bachelor's. So an okay. aggregate of all the four years, and I had obtained more than sixty to sixty-five percent. So they had given. So that is automatically um, 
input it in into your application if you yeah. have received above a particular criteria got it uh, but um, the university does have um, other scholarships the fully funded scholarships uh, which i'm not really aware of uh, but they do have a really good page and detailed explanation as to who can apply when to apply and all that stuff okay. and that also requires uh, an sop um need that and that will be cross checked and then you'll get selected and all that process is okay. there hmm. yeah you got it so what were the approximate monthly expenses you had say rent groceries rent was i was say, staying in a student accommodation but it was not a university accommodation because what i noticed was um the university accommodations they charge quite a lot they are way too expensive and the rooms are very very small mm-hmm. so uh, i had gone to a student accommodation not it's away a little out farther from the city center but they had really go- it had really good transport um, had like a direct tram into the university and the city center so at that time it was i think 99 per week for an on suite room and it was a six shared uh, flat Six people shared flat, okay. so I think I spent around four four hundred to four fifty pounds a month for the rent, and um, you know uh, your monthly expense usually varies. It depends on what you're buying, what you're not buying. Maybe one month you decide to splurge on yourself and you buy all sorts of vegetables and groceries, and the next month yeah. you're just like you know starving or something like that. So I would say maybe a hundred to around fifty pounds. I I usually don't go more than that uh but um 100 to 150 pounds for groceries and all the traveling but now since the travel here has been increased a little if you are using the tram quite a lot okay got it so you said that the apartment was six people sharing one apartment right yes and uh, was it's, it's, it's a I'm I mean, per person per room Yes, so per person per room. So you have a room. It's just a kitchen sh- that we share. So okay. the flat has six rooms and a shared kitchen, and each room has a bathroom. Okay, got it. Yeah, I mean no interactions with different people other than the kitchen. <laughs> yes, yeah. Unless you are coming with people you know. Um, yeah. If you are coming alone, then it's you're making new friends. Yeah, or that's... not? <laughs> you're probably in fights. <laughs> Yeah so uh while doing the course did you do any part times or the course was really hectic to not sign up for any uh, part times No the course was not really hectic because I we were told from before that uh you would it's not like how classes are in India it's like uh 6 days a week uh from 9 to 5 or something like that uh but that was how it was for me in undergrad but um here classes would be maximum 2 to 3 days a week it wouldn't go more than that and um, i it was a bit hectic those 2 to 3 days a week because i had classes from 9 to 5 which was quite a lot of that one particular subject and the first two modules were online in zoom which was not really great for me because it i get it's not that well, that much interactive and they kept putting us in uh, breakout sessions and all that stuff so uh, it was okay uh, but i'm sorry what was the question again i just got <laughs> yeah. away yeah the question was uh, did you do any part times while yeah. Yeah. yes or the course was yeah. uh the part time uh, so in the starting since it was um, all covid um, era so uh, there were these uh, covid test sites um that i had worked in and that paid really well and it was just doing nothing just standing there for 7 hours and making sure everyone's taking the test properly uh so i did that for about 6 months and then i applied to the sheffield city trust jobs and i worked at um an arena uh, it's basically where concerts and ice hockey games take place so i had worked there for 9 months and then i shifted to a ice hockey um you know i skating rink where i worked i was also under sheffield city work there as well okay so, so how much i was 
how much do these part times pay on nali basis so every one is entitled who was um older than 21 or 23 either one of those uh they are being paid around 9.7 per hour uh it is it is what uk has um you know put forth yeah. but it depends from um, different company to different company so the um the covid test sites test sites were basically uh, for, through um an agency called arc recruitment so they usually uh, it's like a zero hour contract so you choose your shifts that you want to work and you can you don't have you don't get the shifts you don't get your rota so you if you decide not to work tomorrow you just don't apply for shifts and they they just don't really care about it so they used to pay around 11 per hour because we were working in covid test sites and then the sheffield city trust was paying around 10 per hour um and if you if you do like 20 hours it's easy for you to pay the rent and also you know um survive for a month yeah that's true yeah i mean for indian students it's worthwhile to work for a while and make new connections yeah. get something yeah, out of it yeah it's like a distraction from the university and the assignments and all that stuff yeah yeah so talking about the course again coming to career fairs and events in the university that happen to you know grab any full time offers or get you to the correct path i really don't know if any career fair took place at a university um because my my course was not with the um like a placement year as well so it was just 18 months of study and then you do your own thing okay so uh, i i don't know if they had it. they should have uh, but if they do if they did my best guess is i'm not really sure if physiotherapy was part of it as well okay. um so they um i did my own job search i made my linkedin profile uh, i updated my uh, linkedin profile i made sure everything was up to date and um, the more i started up you know um putting new stuff or posting new stuff on linkedin i get i got a lot of people to view including recruitment agencies and they had contact contacted me through linkedin and uh, i also applied to nhs jobs and did some interviews to gain the interview experience because the interviews here are quite different and the questions are quite different so um i did quite a few interviews and um i got the experience and as to what kind of questions are asking so then i applied to the job that i got right now and, uh, and i cracked it that's great yeah. so yeah. what was the timeline that you started looking for a full time job um i saw it from september the right after i got my head cpc registration and my um graduate visa i had started applying and by november i had gotten a, a call back saying that i've been offered a position that's great yeah. so uh what is the average pay for a person who's done his ma- his or her masters in physical therapy in the uk i mean it varies a lot based on yeah. experience and the field you're in but then just a number which is the average it depends on experience like you said um so if you have worked um let's say 5 plus years in india you would start off with something called a band 6 or a band 7 either one of those depending on your experience and each band it starts with band 5 so if i don't have an experience right so i would start off as a band 5 physio and uh, nhs or like in the 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 pay scale is fixed for nhs okay. so for a band 5 it would be from 25000 a year to 30 thousand or 35 thousand a year and it keeps on increasing so each band has like a set number like a set pay scale okay. that you're being paid and then you can always um you know ask for more or you know do that during the recruitment process yeah, yeah. got it so uh can you share some of your experience at sheffield hallam some good or bad times that you had honestly it, the campus was the campus is really nice but uh it's in two different parts of the city. we have two campuses so we have a city campus where most of the it and the finance on the other non healthcare subjects are being taught and we have the collegiate campus where 
the allied health professionals usually go so they are in two different parts of the city like two different corners so i would say the commute to collegiate campus was although direct for me by bus it was not i wasn't really up for it i would prefer it was near the city center um as a university they had a lot of they have a lot of uh, societies that you can get into uh there was an indian society and uh, in the starting of the year um when everything opened up and all the restrictions were being lifted um uh, the indian society took up the chance to host bollywood nights almost every other month so it was fun to meet new people there and mm-hmm. like you know jam to hindi songs bollywood songs and there were a lot of other uh So there are a lot of other societies and then you can always make your own society if you have enough people and uh events wise um when i did uh when i when I, during the first year they had uh, organized few trips um to whitby which is a coastal area to manchester uh so it was like a pretty decent uh, one day trip which was which didn't cost quite a lot because if you do go out your on your own you would be spending like at that time i would be spending maybe 100 pounds on train and just food would be like 50 pounds but uh because the university took us on trips we spent quite a less quite less amount of money on that so that was a good thing bad thing i'm not really sure i never really took part in co curricular activities so i can't really say anything bad not like there's nothing bad about the universe there should be it's just i'm not i'm not really i'm not really experience the actual uni uni life yeah um, most so, graduate students don't have that time to experience the university yeah. as such because we are more into doing our studies and going away yeah just as not as being as part as of the yeah, yeah that's true yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so you were talking about so how was the transition for you i mean do you have a lot of indian students in there or yeah so it was it was a very weird process from the start uh like i said before like i had workshops that happened in india but of different university representatives from different universities had come and i'd inquired about shafil halam and they told me that all the seats for this particular course had been filled uh especially and then i'm like i just gave them like a weird stare and they're like yeah most maharashtrians really want this course so it's like call completely full and then later on because a lot of people were asking about it they opened up a little more see a few more seats and um when i re- when i got to see the class it was mostly i would say 98 percent indians mm-hmm. and uh so the transition was not 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 quite there <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like I was back home but not back home so um so I just like kept my university life you know like right there and my personal life outside everything so I wanted to meet new people and I wanted to experience the new life of being independent yeah that's good yeah. so is there some last advice you'd like to give students who are looking into getting into the same course or the same university research your i mean do a great the amount of research on your modules and be sure what module you want to do because uh it is important it will be it will help you you know get that job in that particular field as well so i would say do a lot of research like a lot don't mess up and uh and don't get scared to come here because it is quite fun it is quite risky not risky but scared but also you get to be you in a way yeah and it's a land of opportunities always it it is it is uh, um like for, from from the same field speaking from the point of the same field uh, i would say that the reason i chose uk was in india although the scope for physiotherapy is rising i'm not denying it but uh the pay over there is not really a lot yeah. uh and here they are paying you enough for you to be able to probably send back money home uh send 
money back home so yeah um it it'll be a really good start for the first two years and then you can build your well build yourself up yeah that's true thank you so much anusha it was great talking to you today you too thank you bye bye